Hello once again, everyone. Welcome to the Nutrient Health Project Podcast. My name is Andrew Frisch. This to my left, my beautiful wife. Holly Frisch. Holly Frisch. Uh, she has, before we started recording, she's been trying to work out a burp, so that might <laughs> that might come as we're recording. I said, let it roll, let it rip. <laughs> that's, that's all natural. Mm-hmm. So today is episode nine. Uh, we had another episode number nine, but we ended up scrapping it because I want to put out content that helps you guys. We want to put out content that benefits you, that you can take away something, right? Our, our origin story was something that some of our clients had requested. So we put that together, but more than anything, I want these episodes, again, our mission with the Nutrient Health Project podcast is to make things simple and effective because the health and fitness industries are really good at making things way more complicated than they need to be or or not as effective as they could be to just make a quick buck. And we're putting this out free. We want to help people. We want to make things, again, simple and effective. So... This episode, this episode number nine, is going to be about uh, a game that every time you play it, you're going to lose. It's it's an unwinnable game, right? So this is the game that you will always, always lose. So um, as we start out this episode, I want to talk about a story. And it actually happened on all days of my birthday of last year. So November 22nd, 2020, because this is... September 6, 2021, as I record this, as we record this. So um, the story was myself and my wife um, walking around the apartment complex, just kind of, you know, having a, a relaxed, laid back day. And Holly was having a little bit of a mental issue back and forth. So what what was that issue that you were struggling with? Um, so I was having a major craving for Chick-fil-A. And it was the whole my brain going back and forth like well i want chick-fil-a it would taste good we could you know get chick-fil-a and sit down watch a movie kind of thing and then it was also like i don't need chick-fil-a that's extra calories you always feel worse after you eat it you don't need it and it was that back and forth to where it just wears you out mentally because you're going back and forth and why why and why you shouldn't do it and i was just by the end of it like and he asked me he's like are you okay because like i was just quiet and I was just frustrated by that point. I was hangry and just like defeated um, going back and forth. So that's how I was feeling. So he obviously asked me, you know, am I okay? And from there, he, he kind of yep. uh, gave me his wisdom. So <laughs> I, I don't know about wisdom. I think it's experience more than anything. But I mean, hell, sometimes that's what wisdom is, is just knowledge plus experience. So I could definitely tell something was wrong with her. She wasn't her normal chip herself. You know, again, it was my birthday. We were supposed to be just walking around and having a good day and kind of a relaxed day. I don't remember what day of the week it was, but I think we were both off that day. So it was like a a chill day. And she was just being super quiet. And so I asked her, like, what's wrong? What's going on? And at first, I was like, nothing. Nothing's wrong. Everything's (laughs) fine. I was like, well, okay, so bullshit. What's, What's really going on? And after enough poking and prodding, she told me that, like she just said, she wanted Chick fil A. And so. The, the, the purpose of this episode is more than just how did she get past Chick-fil-A, but it's a game that we all play with ourselves. But we're going to use this Chick-fil-A story as the example to kind of set the stage for you. So the wisdom that she's talking about that I came up, and hell, I don't know, it came out of nowhere. So, you know, thanks to, to whatever ethereal source gave me that wisdom. But I, I told her... Like what she's doing mentally, and I think what any of us do mentally when we're we're going back and forth like that, right? And we're recording this episode because I actually had this very conversation with a client phone call earlier today, and I've had this exact same conversation multiple times with multiple clients. But when you're when you're having that back and forth, whatever it is for you, right? For her that day, it was Chick Fil A because Chick Fil A is kind of like her kryptonite; it's her weakness, right? <laughs> She'd still if if she has a day where it's like you could do anything you want to do today, Holly. What do you want to do? It would be Chick Fil A. I don't think I'm wrong in saying that. <laughs> so, but like the client I was talking to earlier, she was talking about how her she's a stress eater, right? So every time she gets stressed, she thinks of food. Um, other people, it might be, again, you know, the drugs and alcohol thing or the shopping thing or going to your phone or, or not eating or whatever it is. But when we start playing that game, and, and in her case, the Chick-fil-A game, it was natural for her to, like she said, you know, so 
the the pro to you getting Chick Fil A would have been what? Like what it's would have just been comfort? Um, tastes good. Um, you know when it's been a long busy week or you're stressed out, like the fact food is just comforting. Like that's why a lot of people have so many food issues or they gain weight it's because it's the thing that comforts them or calms them down after a long day at work it makes you feel better in the moment and just the thought of oh let's go get some chick-fil-a let's just chill out on the couch and like have a chill day like that sounded good in the moment but again i know how i feel after the fact so correct so that would be the next question then is what would be the negative to having chick-fil-a um i would probably feel guilty about it um feel like i fell off of our normal plan um i would feel horrible physically because like all the grease and everything makes my stomach upset um makes me feel sluggish mentally um and just wouldn't wouldn't feel feel like i stepped back instead of forward towards my towards my goals right so So, and that i mean like it it comes with I think anytime someone gives in to that game, anytime, you know, again, whether it's Chick-fil-A or drinking or whatever, you give in, it comes with regret. It comes with, oftentimes it comes with, and and maybe it's even more insidious, it it comes with like, oh, well, I had that cookie, there goes the whole day, right? Right. (laughs) Or, or, well, I had Chick-fil-A and it's Tuesday, I guess I'll screw this whole week and I'll start fresh on Monday. Monday. But, so a lot of regret and pain comes with that and the the things that i told her while we were on that walk i didn't even ask her the pros and cons because part of the pros and cons with it is like when i was dealing with my alcohol and my drug issues and things like that my mom or other people would be you know just and like some of my clients even knew i was kind of dealing with the alcoholism and they would try to help me and try to you know rationalize things and talk to me about it and be like well just think of what it's doing to your body And it's like i know what it's doing to my body like that doesn't it doesn't matter because the reason I was doing it is because it made me feel better, right? Even if it was just in the moment and I felt like all kinds of regret and dis, um, disgust, I guess, for lack of a better term, but like I just felt bad afterwards, I felt good in the moment. It's the same thing with the Chick-fil-A. You get that dopamine rush of like, I'm going to get some Chick-fil-A yeah. or like I'm going to get some alcohol in my case, whatever it might have been. So I didn't even go over the pros and cons with her, right? Because you know that. and and. Even like my client earlier who she's stressed out and she's thinking about food, she knows that she doesn't need to have the sugary stuff that she was going to go for, but that doesn't help you in the moment because of what's going on. So the game that you're playing that you will always lose is this this subconscious game of tennis in your in your brain, right? With your brain, really. So it's like you have your subconscious and your conscious brain, right? Your conscious brain is that frontal lobe, your neocortex, right? Your 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 seat of critical thinking, of decision making, of long term planning, and things like that. That's your conscious brain, which you're actively consciously selecting to think. Then you have your subconscious brain, which is like all of the stuff that comes up that you're not consciously choosing to think. That's a lot of stuff, right? We think that we consciously are in control of like 99% of our day. And the subconscious is a little bit. It's the complete other way around, right? Your subconscious brain is kind of constantly like like whispering stuff to you. And it's the conscious part of your brain that is then choosing which things to pick and choose to, to bring into your everyday reality. So what you're doing when you're going back and forth with like a, with her with this Chick-fil-A thing is like her subconscious was like, Chick-fil-A. And she's like, I don't want to have Chick-fil-A. And she's smacking that, you know, that, that Chick-fil-A tennis ball back across the net, back to the brain. And then her brain was just like, Chick-fil-A. And like it just smacks it back. And she's like, I don't want it. So when you're playing that game, that volleying back and forth, your brain is giving you something because it's basically, for whatever reason, like with my client this morning, she was stressed out because of her job. So her brain picks up on like, hey, something's not right. We're getting stress signals. We want to feel better. What makes us feel better? Food, right? So the brain is like food, food cravings, and it keeps shooting those out even though she's saying, I don't want that. And she's hitting it back and forth. And that's what was happening with Holly and Chick-fil-A is for whatever reason, like it was, we were stressed out or we were tired or maybe the workout was really hard, whatever it was, 
she was just craving Chick-fil-A. And even though she knows that she didn't really want Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. she's hitting that thing back and forth. Yeah. Right? So I think the moment that came to me, I was just like, damn, where'd that come from? Mm -hmm. That really helped kind of change the whole landscape. As I told her, I was like, you're sitting here playing this tennis game. You're smacking that ball back and forth. You're saying, I don't want to do it. Your brain's saying, like, do it back and forth. Sometimes the only way to win a game is to not play the game. Just put the racket down and stop the back and forth with your brain, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I mean, did that yeah. seem like it helped? Within like, I feel like it was within like 10 minutes, like we were walking down one of the roads and just by the time we got back, like it was just gone. Like it just wasn't, it was way less torturous than going back and forth in your brain, just letting it go. Yep. So. so, and that's, a lot of this will come down to like our, our willpower. I'm a, I'm a big believer, like we all have willpower, right? Some people will argue this, but I think that willpower is limited. Now, that's not to say that like it's it's everyone has the same amount of willpower or anything, but like some people, if you go back and forth like that, it's only gonna be five or ten minutes and you're like, ah screw it, I'm going to Chick-fil-A. Other people will go for weeks or months at a time, right? Like you know, I'm very robotic in the things that I do. And that's how in the past when I had tried to quit like drinking and, and, and the drugs and all that, like I would kind of essentially willpower my way through a couple weeks or a couple months, but then eventually something either really bad or really good would happen. I just like, ah, screw it. And I would do what we do when we're in that and our, and our willpower starts to deplete, I would rationalize. And I would just think like, well, and I'm sure that's kind of somewhere, it's like you, you make a deal with yourself. Cause I would be like, well, if I just drink this one time, I'll be okay for the next, you know, I'll just, I won't do it again for the rest of the year. And I'll just be this one time, which like, I know underneath of it, it was a bunch of bullshit. And I know, were you probably rationalizing with yourself when it comes to Chick-fil-A? Like, well, yeah. if I get it this one time. Oh yeah. And you feel better doing that. Cause they're like, well, it's just this one time, you know, everyone gives in one time and then I'll be on the straight and narrow and I won't, you know, that craving, like, you know, it's not going to go away forever. Like if I had Chick-fil-A that day, more than likely, like it, can come up again and there I am in the same spot so yeah will you know will power is not gonna gonna last you through everything so outside of then just not playing the game right like how do you actually apply that what do you actually do real time to change the game mm -hmm. and and again just not play the game how do you put the racket down when your brain is kind of constantly you know putting that thing up into your subconscious that you don't want to mess with and i would say the best way to do it excuse me is to distract your brain right you have to grab the wheel from your subconscious and just like give it an abrupt left or right turn right take it off of a completely different path um this honestly this is going to sound strange but it could just be as funny as like thinking about a clown wearing a cowboy suit or something i mean just give it something really <laughs> random where your brain is like wait what like it's going to completely distract it so i mean it could be something as simple as that just just when you notice that that beginning you know and you might not even catch yourself until you're in like the seventh round of back and forth volleying this across the tennis net you're gonna be like oh shit i'm playing that game but when you catch it take that wheel and abruptly turn it right that would be the first thing just make an abrupt left turn and stop the back and forth because that back and forth all that's doing is just tick 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 it's 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 ticking away on your willpower and it's only a matter of time again minutes hours days weeks months it's only a matter of time before you crack and have that thing and then you can very easily get into a vicious cycle again like with the addiction side of things that's you 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 give in you rationalize you make a deal with yourself you do the thing you didn't want to do and you make that deal but you feel bad because you gave in so because you feel bad your brain was like well i want to feel good again and your brain was like hey chick fil a and you're like damn it no i just said i'm not going to do that for the next six months and it's in around and around you go mm -hmm. right so making that abrupt left turn is a is a is a great way to just completely derail your brain. Because like again, your monkey brain is just gonna be like giving you that thing over and over and over. And if you just give it something way out of left field, pink elephants riding or, or with hula hoops, right? I mean, just whatever it is, <laughs> it's going to distract your brain. Mm -hmm. But moreover, and like that, I think that's like an emergency thing, right? In the, in the moment, give your, give your brain something just way out of left field yeah. where it's just like, what the hell? Um, and if, if you're laughing at the image that you give yourself, you're probably doing it right. But moreover, long term, 
your brain, like I said at the beginning of this, your brain is giving you that thing because it wants to feel better, right? It understands that you're, again, stressed or sad or anxious or bored or whatever that uncomfortable feeling is. It's trying to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. So long term, one of the things that you can do and, and pause the podcast when we're done with this. But one of the things you can do is start making lists, it just five or ten items of things that make you happy things not even that's a bad term right because then you're gonna be like well puppy dogs and flowers i don't mean that but like things you're excited about doing right what's what's something that you really want to do and just brainstorm it so it's not like it, there, there's no judgment in the things you put down so if you're like you know i want to fly tomorrow someday cool put that on the list if you're like I want to start writing every day. Put that on the list. If you're like, I want to start making can candles, like Holly was talking about earlier, um, you know, whatever the thing is, just start making a list of things that you're excited to do that are like a different universe from the thing that you're trying to stop doing. Right. So, um, so like, what's something? I'm gonna put you on the spot. What's something that you're excited to do that you're not doing right now? Um. So graphic design, um, I I want to learn graphic design. I love art. I love colors. I love um, making things for my family, for my husband. And the one thing I haven't done is anything like digital with art. So I am um, have decided to do like ten minutes a day of just graphic design, and you know that takes the pressure off of. Oh, I've got to sit down. I've got to do an hour every day. And, you know, what if it's a crazy busy day and I don't have time to do an hour? You know, everyone can find 10 minutes a day. And more than likely, if you find, if you sit down and do those 10 minutes, you're going to do more or you're going to be able to do more if you have the time. And so if you do 10 minutes each day, you're learning a little bit each day. You're putting the work in on it each day. More than likely, you'll get more uh, time put in on it and you're gaining a skill. So that's one thing that I want to do, that I want to learn, that I haven't been doing before. So I, I've started that, um, actually today, um, <laughs> starting doing graphic design in some shape or form, whether it's a YouTube video or um, a, a book on typography and things like that, or even Skillshare, like um, something towards doing graphic design each day. And how will it make you feel if you do, you said 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes. Yeah. How will that make you feel when you get that 10 minutes in on doing the thing? Good. Like Be you actually did something. Because you, you did the thing you said you were going to do instead, yeah. right? And she makes good points there of making it a, a short, digestible 10 to 15 minutes, right? And maybe your thing is, I want to fly to Mars one day, right? Um, I don't know that I want to fly to Mars. So I, don't think, I don't know where the hell that's coming from. But, again, out of left field, right? Maybe your thing is you want to fly to Mars one day. Okay, cool. Then, like, start looking into, well, what does that entail? And even if you're, even if you waste 20 minutes of your life trying to find, like, Elon, <laughs> Elon, Elon Musk's secret sign-up sheet to be one of the first people to go to Mars, you're still not doing the thing. You've, you've done the, the task of distracting your brain from playing the stupid effing game that you're trying to play, right? That your brain is like, hey, hey, hey. You're like, nope, I'm gonna go research flying to Mars, right? Or graphic design, or writing a book, or whatever the thing is. Reading a book. Hell, sometimes it can be like, go take a nap, right? Go for a 10 minute walk. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't have to be some massive undertaking like flying to Mars, but like just do something else, distract your brain. So that's what I'd say like right now applicable, like it doesn't even have to be in the moment of playing the game in, in again, round seven of that game. Like right now, when you when we're, we're wrapping this up, when we're done with this podcast, make a list of five to 10 things, brainstorm, no judgment, just let it fly. Let your, put your brain to work doing something else instead of trying to secretly it's not really trying to sabotage you, but trying to make you feel better. Put it to work being creative. Put it to work coming up with a list of things that you want to do instead that make you excited, right? Make you happy because that's what you need to do is, is have something that makes you feel good beside the thing that you're trying to do, right? And that even, 
it can even bleed into like I have clients and, and people that I know who it's like every day they just have to have a glass of wine or a shot of whiskey or smoke a joint or you know <laughs> or I'm serious or take a Xanax or whatever it is. It's like do you really have to do something to take that edge off, right? Um, I, Holly and I know some people who, who probably listen to this podcast who like if they don't have that shot they might kill someone. So yes, <laughs> please, Alan, make sure you make sure you have that shot. But like no, like seriously. You can apply this to anything that you want to change. Instead of this back and forth bit with your brain, come up with a list of things that give you that feeling instead. It's mm-hmm. not you're 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 playing a game where you think your brain is fighting against you and it's not. It's trying to help you, it's trying to make things better, trying to make you happier, it's trying to make you feel good. Instead of playing that game, make a list, redirect it, give it distractions, grab that wheel and rip it away from the monkey brain. Yeah. So Yes. That's all I have. Do you have any finishing final thoughts? I'm going to keep putting you on the spot. Um, another thing like <coughs> that Annie and I have talked about doing it at night because there'll be times um, where I'm stressed out at work or I'm just tired and I want to come home and, you know, even if it's not junk food, like it's healthy food, I could still eat too much or eat things like extra carbs because at night is the time when you want carbs. <laughs> at least that's me. Um, and so we talked about playing a board game when we get home. Um even stretching, even though I'm not, I'm not the best at stretching, but I'm gonna work on it. <laughs> in, tr- in truth, the board game idea was mine this morning Listen. because stretching has not been working. Like I stretch yeah. every day. If I don't, I'll end up like all all balled into a tight ball. And uh, she's not been stretching. Stretching can hurt. Okay. Yeah, stretching does hurt, but it helps you feel better. But I told her this morning, I was like, why don't we just like it could be like a couple decks of like go fish or we've got scrabble or jenga or whatever like let's just play a board game instead so or um, reading i like reading i I get i oh my goodness so everyone should read harry potter it's a great (laughs) thing like if you want to get distracted and get off in a different world harry potter is the perfect thing for that if you instead of eating that thing that you don't want to eat or doing that thing you don't want to do like go read harry potter i guarantee you'll be wrapped up in it and that will make you happy because it's so great. One final thought on this too, actually, now that you mentioned that, because it's like, yes, you can go read instead of eat, right? If that's one of the things that you enjoy doing. And that's why I mentioned to the client this morning, she said that she really likes reading. She also likes sitting out, I think, on her porch and like kind of, I think she had hummingbird feeders and she wanted to like go out on the porch and just be around the hummingbirds. So I was like, combine those, right? Take your book out and read around the hummingbirds. But I know firsthand experience that sometimes like, okay, you're sitting and reading a book, but your brain is still thinking about that thing, right? For me, like when I was drinking, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to try and read instead. And it's like, as I'm reading, it would be like, I'm thinking, I'm not really even paying attention to the book. I'm thinking about drinking instead. That would be where getting the hell out of the environment that you're in will do do you a world of good, mm-hmm. right? So getting out for a 10 minute walk, oftentimes you come back in and you'll feel like, whoa, like the, the landscape has totally changed. And the other thing I told this client earlier today was like, even if worst case scenario, you still like the reading isn't helping, the sitting in nature isn't helping, you still kind of break glass in case of emergency, have to give into the food. Again, stack those habits and tell yourself, okay, I'm going to allow myself the food, but I am also going to go for a 10 minute walk afterwards, right? Because just by getting that 10 to 15 minutes of, of just a walk will help blunt that, that sugar response. And then you're still like, okay, yes, I did this one thing that I wasn't really happy about, but I did go do this thing that helped like tick off the other box and, and was a benefit to me, right? So. That's just another thing to kind of think about where it, it's, okay, so if you do still give in to the thing, if she did go get Chick-fil-A, it's like, all right, well, cool, get Chick-fil-A, but you and me are walking two laps around the apartment buildings after you eat the Chick-fil-A, right? right? Just to kind of like make up and, and help, again, blunt that blood sugar response that would come from it. So end of the end of the, the podcast, basically the takeaways here, guys, is some games you cannot win. Some games, the only way to win is by stopping your your participation don't play the damn game that's the only way to win it so like i said make a list of five or ten things make it a habit of every day writing three four or five things that you want to do with your life or the next day or something that you look forward to doing that you think would be fun whether it's playing video games doing crossword puzzles i'm obviously a boring ass (laughs) individual reading books walking you know quality time with your significant other you know whatever it might be but um 
you are not going to win the game if you keep playing the game. It's you're you're going to wear down your willpower. So distract your brain, grab that steering wheel, rip it away from the monkey mind, make an abrupt left right turn, think about pink elephants with hula hoops, <laughs> and uh, fly to Mars. So there you go. that is everything we've got for episode number nine, guys. Thank you everyone so much for listening. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, I think Apple Podcast, obviously. Uh, I think you can subscribe on Spotify. Find us, share us, like us, subscribe to us, share this with anybody that you think might benefit from it. Take a screenshot, post it on social media, tag us, whatever you got to do. Nutrient Health and Fitness. We are at Nutrient underscore official, I believe, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, Holly and Andy Frisch everywhere else. So we love you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So, And we will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye. Later.